the gravitational field strength. What is the method? You should assume a disk. Then due to that disk, how much of field here? Then you should first do elemental disk. What is the field? Then you should integrate. You'll get an answer. Using Gauss law, I'm going to show it. So what we are going to do is, I'm just going to assume a, a Gaussian surface. So what is the Gaussian surface? The Gaussian surface will be this much. So here, what is the Gaussian surface? I assume. So what is the shape of Gaussian surface? It's a spherical. Gaussian sphere. Then, then what I do? I, I'll assume a Gaussian. How e bar? E bar will be directed towards center. E out. I'll write it. And this is the elemental surface ds. And, and everywhere the e bar will be anti-parallel to n cap, and e, e out will be constant at distance r. So therefore, the entire formula which is like this, e bar dot ds equal to 4 pi g. What is the net mass enclosed? m. So how do it will appear? Though it's a solid sphere, this everything what happened will appear like a point mass. The whole what happened solid sphere, you can treat like a point mass and it will be placed at the center of that one. Then if e is constant at all points, and e is anti parallel to this, so therefore this will become integral of e out minus of ds cos of 180 equal to 4 pi g. What is the mass enclosed? m. <coughs> Negative sign will eliminate. Uh, integral of ds. Such patches, if I add, I'll get surface area of a sphere. <coughs> so what is surface area of a sphere? 4 pi r square. This is the gravitational field strength due to the sphere, outside the sphere. Then on the surface I want, on the surface what is the value? So definitely what we are discussing, this is the first case for r greater than the radius. So where the point will lie? The point lies outside the sphere. So this is a solid sphere and you are writing point mass. When you are writing Gauss law, don't, don't, uh, say, like if you are far away, means like if R infinity, then we'll see point mass, nothing like that. You look at the moon, how did it appear for you? Like a point mass. So th there's a methodology of involving Gauss law here. So though this is a solid sphere, it will appear like a, where the mass is present, the mass is present here. But the whole mass will appear like a point mass constant at center. When do this will happen? When a body, if its mass is distributed symmetrically <coughs> with respect to center of Gaussian surface, then the whole mass you can treat like a point mass placed at the center of Gaussian surface. These are the some uh, corollary of uh, that particular law is what the Gauss has proposed here. And that is what we are applying it here. So what is that uh, uh, note? I'll put it. If a mass of a body is distributed symmetrically with respect to center of Gaussian surface then the whole mass appears as a point mass placed at center of <laughs> this is one uh, prior condition when you're doing Gaussian, that, that too means whenever you get a spherical object, uh, which will be symmetric with respect to Gaussian surface, I think for Gaussian sphere, 
if the spherical object will be symmetrically, the mass will be distributed symmetrically. No, I am I am using word symmetrically. You would understand. You take now this particular point. At what distance it is? Small r minus capital R. You look at this also. Shall I say that the mass is distributed symmetrically with respect to center of Gaussian surface? Spherical symmetry is there. So the whole spherical object, what happens? Though it's a spherical body, it will behave like a point mass. It appears to be again. It will not become point mass. It will not become point. It appears to be. So if it's a point mass, we know what is the field. G M by R square. No need to even this apply this everything. Just that you can write it. Sir, is it true? Is it really uh, what we calculated the correct answer? Yes, in fact, you do practically because what is Earth? Earth is a <coughs> spherical object, almost like near to spherical object. You calculate the gravitational field. It obeys this particular formula. Agreed? No, this one uh, on the surface of the solid sphere. How much it will be? Here, yeah, the sphere uh, later classes will call that as a planet. And next again, if it is a on the surface, how much it is? The radius of that. Let it be R. And now, where is the point? The point has come. This one. So let me do one thing. I'll write P one. R greater than R. And now, where is the point P two? It point P two where R is equal to capital R on the surface. I think the formula what you should do G M by R square put small r equal to capital R put small r equal to capital R you'll get the field on the surface and how it will be directed the field will be radially invert here here it's like this and O is the center of this one. Next, we'll we'll proceed into point three. So here is what our points here. So point one. I'm interested outside on the surface and again the inside the solid sphere. So already now we got outside on the surface. Now we'll go inside that one. Inside the solid sphere, how much the gravitational field? Strength? How to calculate that inside? Hmm. Let, let me take the same sphere. No, uh, this is the Gaussian surface. I assumed it. Why, why spherical Gaussian surface? Because the mass is distributed symmetrically, no? So a spherical Gaussian surface will be much suitable for us. Okay, after getting this. Now what is the total mass of the sphere? So what is the next point? At point P3. So that, that P3 is here. We have to find out here. So what, what is the uh, third point? At point P3, where R will be less than small r. Inside the solid sphere, no? This everything is a solid sphere. Huh? I'll write like this. Some, some very rough diagram. This this solid sphere. Oh, what is the and what is this dotted line? The dotted line is a Gaussian surface. Or better said, uh, got Gaussian surface or Gaussian sphere. Anything you call it. In a space in a radial distance of capital R, what is mass m is there? In a radial distance of smaller, how much of mass enclosed? The mass enclosed is different, no? M dash. What is M? Rho into density equal to mass by 4 by 3 pi R cube. 
Then what is m dash? Mass enclosed by the Gaussian surface. So we'll write it here. Mass. How much of mass enclosed by <coughs> Gaussian surface? Density into volume of that. How much? Four by three R cube. M dash equal to what is rho? M by four by three pi R cube. This is so. This will be equal to how much? Oh, here. Four by three pi. Four by three get cancelled. So M R cube by capital R cube. Let's write our Gauss law. What is our Gauss law? Integral of e bar dot ds is equal to 4 pi g. Now, what is the net mass enclosed? M dash, not m. So, where is the mass present? Only in the sphere of radius r is what mass enclosed by Gaussian surface. No. And now, your task question, sir. Why not here? Why not this region? Yes. In fact, it will contribute. This region also will contribute, but the net field at point P3 will be only due to mass enclosed. So how do you can see? Okay, let, let me derive, or, or else I'll, I'll go for next part. I'll show that why only mass enclosed will contribute there. I think I need. Okay, first let me derive the expression, then I'll come to there. Let me show the answer. So time being, what when I am I'm, I'm saying that. The net field at point P3 is only due to the mass present in a sphere of radius small r. Only in that dotted region, or how much of mass is present, that only will contribute. This mass, which is present outside the Gaussian surface, will the net field at point P3 due to this region will be zero. That is due to symmetry, I see. Okay, now this will become. Now, what is ds here again? I, I should assume I should show what is ds. No, so ds will be definitely this is n cap, and here is what that e in. Inside, no, we are calculating inside. Let's write the formula. This should be equal to at all points, in will be constant. So, this will become integral of ds cos 180 4 pi g m r cube by capital R cube. Uh, integral of ds, this will be e in integral of ds, how much you'll get. 4 pi r square. 4 pi r square, 4 pi r square get cancelled. So finally, how much we are ending up with the answer? So what is the gravitational field strength inside? <coughs> it varies, it's like it's proportional to r. At center will be zero. And as you proceed, it increases. And it be maximum. So can we justify our answer? Put small r equal to capital R, where we are will come on the surface. No, when you are on the surface, what is the gravitational field strength? Gm by r square. I think put small r equal to capital R, Gm by r square. What earlier we brought? The same answer we are ending up. No. So here, what is this? R is less than or equal to capital. This formula is applicable only for insight. Uh, no, I think I was, I had to justify this one, no? Field due to the region which lies outside, why it is, will not contribute here, how it has become zero. That, that I'll give simple mathematical expression, just geometry, high school geometry is what I'll take help of. See, your high school geometry is so important that nowadays we are living it, to be frank. So this was the surface, no? Now, uh, let me take a shaded region. So I, I want the field at this point. <coughs> so this was the point P3, no? Which we took, we have determined it.
just some very good logical reason i'll give it not, nothing big no okay look at this so there are two strips uh, two what happened regions i'm taking that one at point p3 okay this is our point two this is r this is capital r will i agree this now let me take this as region 1 region 2 i am very sure that the gravitational field in that point p3 due to 192 will be equal and opposite like that open you can take the symmetric element means so like a, <coughs> will they not contribute as what field this will contribute this will contribute like that open if you take the vector sum at this particular point due to all thing will be zero that one just one small idea i'm giving it because of symmetry what field this sector contributes here it will be this direction no? due to this will be like this due to this two will be like this here i think i have i'll try to show in the so this will be e1 this will be e2 that e1 will become equal to e2 like that open you can assume the several strips here and if you calculate that one <coughs> the net field at point p3 due to the mass that is lying outside the gaussian surface will be zero i am not saying it will not contribute it will contribute but the net field at point p3 due to the mass which lies outside the gaussian surface due to symmetry will nullify it then who will contribute the field at this point only the mass enclosed this, this is one greatest advantage of the gauss law so uh, it it verified as long back it is verified better let's accept it and proceed here all else what happened so no sir i didn't like it okay go back in assume my has given is assuming a first solid sphere no you will assume a disk due to disk what is the field here then you will integrate you will be in a big trouble so just this logical thinking if you can develop no you will be in better position so what is this uh, this one there's a gaussian surface this is a solid sphere solid sphere is not only that red color this everything is a solid sphere so i'll, I'll... okay agree this one no so th there is a method there is a way what happen we will proceed here no so i think whenever the spherical object comes spherical body it is better to take the gauss law now if i plot the graph if i plot the graph so how the variation of the gravitational field i am interested in the variation so as i move inside <coughs> the field strength will increase then on the surface it is becoming maximum then outside it is decreasing 